as usual, I'm going to jump right in, get started. I don't know about you, but I prefer watching videos that get right to the point. Let me know in the comments what you think. Anyway, so I'm starting by making the printed circuit board for the amplifier. I designed the circuit board and it uses a stereo chip amp, that's two channels. And I used to be into this a lot more about 15 years ago. And I learned how to make circuit boards from scratch very quickly. And the way I'm doing this has a name, it's called the toner transfer method. With the amp board made, I can get started on making the case for the amplifier. This is a block of solid maple I've got put in my CNC. And what I'm doing here is I'm cutting the front panel. And one of the benefits of having a CNC is you can make really precise cuts with it. So that's why I'm using it here. The front of the app is mostly made from wood, but there's also a bezel that goes around the meters and the power switch. And I thought it would make that from aluminum. So I put that on the CNC as well, but I didn't have much success. I was using the wrong settings. And then I said to myself, you don't need to make this from aluminum. You can make it from plastic because you're going to paint it black anyway. This is one eighth inch plexiglass and it cuts a lot cleaner than the aluminum. There's some fine tuning to make it fit perfectly in the opening. And also I need to sand it down a bit so that it's completely flush with the surface. Now I've taken the front panel and I've cut it in half, which may seem like an odd move, but it's part of the design to have a gap between the top and bottom piece. Also, it allows me to cut out the back so I have L-shaped pieces instead of blocks and that allow me to get the parts in there. I got some more machining to do and rounding on the router table to clean things up. And now I'm cutting the parts for the sides. And these are just square blocks and I'm cutting them from solid maple. I drill some countersinks and then I can screw it to the parts of the front panel. And you can see how that works. Now I need to get the corners rounded over and then I can get it screwed together, at least temporarily, so that I can get the other machining operations done. And part of that is cutting a recess in the top and the bottom for the panels that will fit in the top and the bottom to close the case. And here I'm cutting a rabbit in the back end of each side piece and that'll be for the back panel. So a little sanding, you know, to get everything smoothed out and ready for final assembly while the CNC is cutting out that back panel. This is a piece of half inch thick plastic and this machines really nicely. And I decided to cut the littering in using a V groove bit. And then this piece right here is the cover for the transformer that'll be in there. It'll provide the power for the amplifier. Now I bought a pair of meters on Amazon and I'm using those to put in the front. Also a power switch needs to go in and I actually got this out of an old receiver that I took apart many years ago. Whenever possible, I like to recycle stuff and I've got a pretty big inventory of old parts. The only complication with using this switch was that I had to make a sheet metal mounting plate. Then I can carry on with doing the rest of the wiring inside of the amp. Power comes in the back, goes to the transformer. From the transformer, it goes to the amp board where it gets turned into DC and that 
powers the amplifier. Now the bottom panel for the amp is another salvaged part from that same receiver that I got the switch from. And then it's just a matter of getting everything hooked up and then I can turn it on for the first time to see what happens. Hopefully no smoke comes out. Here you can see the meter is light up with this nice yellow glow which I thought when I bought them wasn't going to look good, but it really goes well with this black bezel and the natural maple. Now you might notice that there's no volume control on this. This will be connected to a computer and that's where I'll control the volume. Now I can make the top panel and this time I did use aluminum. Cut it to size and sand it nice and smooth and get it ready for paint. And I can put the feet on the bottom of the amp and then put the cover on. I also took the time to paint the screws so that they wouldn't be silver anymore and stand out like a sore thumb. Turning it on makes no noise whatsoever. And then you put some music through and noise comes out. All in all, a very satisfying project. Like I said, I used to be into this a lot deeper a few years ago. And it's nice to get back to it, especially when you can make something that actually works. And I made this amplifier specifically to drive the small open baffle speakers that I made recently. And if you're interested in seeing how I made those, there's a link in the description.